everybody, my name is Amy Gimple and welcome to my channel. You may have already seen some of my videos, especially if you watch Disney content. I have previously only used this channel for some Disney vlogs from my trips to the Disney parks, but something pretty big has happened to me recently and I felt compelled to make a video about it and start making some content about it, so I'm trying something completely different. It's been a long time since I've just sat down in front of a camera and talked to it, so I feel a little awkward. I think it's going to take me a while to get back into the swing of things, so try and bear with me. But I want to talk to you guys today about wedding planning during a global pandemic, which is something that I unexpectedly now have experience with, and a lot of other people have been going through this experience as well. So I thought it might be helpful for me to just talk through what happened to me and how my fiance and I came to the decision of postponing our wedding in light of COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic, because what helped me when I was first getting started making these big decisions was listening to other brides and grooms and hearing how they handled this decision and the steps that they took to come to the ultimate decision that they did. So I thought if listening to other people's decision-making process helped me, maybe sharing my story would be able to help somebody else. So for today, coronavirus, our wedding, what happened? I'll start with the basics. My fiance and I live in Pennsylvania because something that impacts a lot of this decision making for brides all across the country and the world is where their wedding is supposed to take place because there's a lot of different rules and regulations and changes happening that change depending on where you live. So my fiance and I grew up in Pennsylvania, met in Pennsylvania, live in Pennsylvania. We're located outside the Philadelphia area in the suburbs and that's where our wedding was meant to take place. My fiance's name is Kenny. We have been together since high school. So we've actually been together for 10 years, which is a long time. We've been waiting a long time to get married. We got engaged April 27th of 2019 when we had been dating nine years at the time. We were waiting to get engaged until we both felt pretty comfortable in our career situations, our financial situations. We had lived together for almost a year at that point and we knew that that was right around the time that we were ready to commit to each other for life and we knew that we wanted a summer wedding because my fiance is a teacher so he doesn't really have the ability to take off extended periods of time during the school year with ease. It's kind of complicated for him to do that. So we figured summer wedding, we figured if we get engaged in April, having a wedding in August of 2020 would give us as much time as possible to plan while still having a summer wedding without having to wait over two years. We didn't want longer than like a year and a half engagement. We were just too excited to get married at this point. So after our April 27th, 2019 engagement, we settled on a August 2020 wedding. And we weren't that picky about the date. We really just wanted to find a date that was available for a venue we liked, for vendors we liked, and pick the date and go forward with it from there. So we settled on August 8th, 2020. We were getting married at St. John the Baptist Church in Maniunk, Pennsylvania, and our reception was going to be at the Chubb Hotel and Conference Center in Lafayette Hill, PA. When COVID-19 really started to take its toll and things started closing and people went into the stay-at-home orders, we basically had all of the big things done for our wedding. This was back in March of 2020. We had all of our vendors secured. We had transportation, hair and makeup, photography, entertainment, anything you could think of. We already had the vendors done. And we had my dress. All of the bridesmaids had ordered their dresses. Kenny and all of his groomsmen had ordered suits. The only things that we really hadn't done were some DIY projects. I had signs that I wanted to make that we were going to use to decorate our wedding spaces. We hadn't done any of that yet, but we had already started ordering favors. My bachelorette and Kenny's bachelor parties were planned and booked. My shower was planned. It was supposed to be a surprise bridal shower. I didn't know when it was, but I knew that my family and my bridesmaids had planned it and everything was set and ready to go. We basically had everything done when COVID started and we were right in the home stretch. So when did we realize that things might need to change? The first thought that I had when we went into a shelter in place order at the end of March was my shower. I didn't know when it was. I knew that they were canceling any sort of gathering that included people outside of your immediate household. 
I had an inkling that my shower was taking place sometime in April or May just because I knew a lot of my bridesmaids had travel coming up and it seemed like those were the only two months that I knew everyone was available that would have been able to get together. So I texted my mom when shelter in place went into effect and just said, hey, if you want to let me know when my bridal shower is so that I can help you figure out what to do about it given this whole coronavirus thing, I'm totally fine with that. Um, and my mom said, okay, like maybe we should talk about that. So she and one of my two maids of honors and I got together for dinner and this was a, the very first week of shelter at home when we didn't realize that you weren't supposed to be mixing outside of your household. Um, but the three of us got together at my mom's house for dinner and they told me when it was. It was supposed to be April 4th, which was only two weeks away at this point. So we knew that that was not really going to be a realistic thing to happen. But we didn't imagine in a million years that a wedding all the way in August, four months away, would get postponed. So we were saying, oh, well, we're just so glad that the shower is the only thing we're gonna have to reschedule. The wedding's gonna be fine. I feel so bad for brides whose weddings are in two weeks that now they need to cancel and postpone everything. So we were just glad that it was just the shower. It was a bummer that now I would know when it is, but we figured, hey, if that's the worst thing that comes out of this whole experience, we're doing okay. Little did we know. So my one maid of honor was great. She reached out to all the bridesmaids, found a new day that was available for her and my mom. My mom called the venue where she'd scheduled my shower and we moved it to July 18th, which was gonna be a lot closer to the wedding date, but at least we were still going to be able to have a shower. And then we just sort of went into quarantine mode. I stopped doing any sort of signage, any sort of active planning, mostly because we really didn't have that much planning to do anymore. But in the back of my head, I was like, I'm sure we'll be fine, but just in case we're not, I'm not gonna make any signs yet. I'm not gonna do anything that puts a date on anything. Just in case, you know, I'll wait till a month from now when I'm sure this is all over and everything's back to normal and I'll make my signs then. Aside from that, we were just sitting at home, doing our quarantine thing, working from home, Kenny and I in our one bedroom apartment, didn't think that there was any chance of postponing happening in the slightest. Pennsylvania had taken this whole thing pretty seriously. We're pretty close to New York and therefore there were a lot of hot spots in Philadelphia and in the surrounding area. I knew of a couple other people that were going to be canceling slash postponing their weddings that were happening in like the April and May timeframe, which was heartbreaking to watch. I was in a wedding that was supposed to be April 25th, but I kept watching all these other brides postpone their weddings. And I was in a lot of Facebook groups online for planning purposes. And I was seeing brides all over the country talking about postponing their weddings. And I just started to get this bigger and bigger gut feeling in the pit of my stomach. Like maybe this is going to be a bigger thing than I originally thought it was. We made it through all of April without really considering the possibility of postponing the wedding. On the day that my bridal shower was supposed to be, since I found out about it, I was bummed. Kenny and I made like a nice breakfast at home and we had champagne and I was like, well, at least I'm still getting a bridal shower. It's just, you know, a few months from now. But it really hadn't sunk into me that the wedding might not happen the way that we thought it would. Until the very beginning of May. In those Facebook groups that I was in, I started seeing some people talk about what are we doing about August weddings? And it hadn't even crossed my mind that postponing our wedding in August of 2020 was going to be an issue. But people really started to say, I think I just wanna postpone and get it over with so that it's done and I don't need to worry about it. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. I'm like, why wouldn't you wait as long as possible? Try to make sure that this gets done. Like, August is so far away, I'm sure it'll be fine. I can't believe people are pulling the plug already. But just hearing of a few people that had made that decision triggered something in me to realize, well, maybe that's something that I'm going to need to consider. Maybe August isn't as clear cut as we can imagine. I've only been in quarantine for four to six weeks now at this time, and I thought the end was in sight. We're probably gonna go back to work, you know, Memorial Day by the end of May, everything will be fine. These little seeds of doubt just started trickling in my mind, but I don't think I ever really accepted or fully understood that postponing my wedding was going to be something real and tangible and more likely than not. Until one day, something hit me. I don't know what caused it. I don't know what sparked my realization, but sometime, I think it was like the second week of May, early May, something just hit me. And I realized that there's a very real possibility that my wedding in August won't happen. And it wasn't even 
a decision like, oh, we're going to postpone. It was just, I had been living in denial for the first month and a half of quarantine, thinking August was so far out, August was fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We don't even need to worry about it. And then all of a sudden, this switch to everyone talking about, I'm moving for August. Are you moving for August? Well, in this state, I'm staying for August. Are you moving? Everyone just started making these decisions and it dawned on me that I was like, we can't just live in denial anymore. Even if we're not ready to fully postpone our wedding, we need to have a plan. And that day was really hard. That was the saddest day through this entire experience. It's gotten easier since that day to accept the fact that we are postponing, but that day just sucked. It was sad. I took a long bath with a big glass of wine and a bath bomb and a candle and I was reading these articles on Facebook and I was seeing everyone postponing and I started doing more research. I started reading articles written by wedding planners in the industry and I started watching videos on YouTube of people talking about their decisions and the overwhelming decision and consensus was that it's better safe than sorry to move your August wedding, especially if you're in somewhere in the Northeast that was impacted pretty heavily, like the Philadelphia area was, and especially if you have a big wedding, which I haven't mentioned up until this point, but there's 262 people on our invite list. That's how many people we're inviting to our wedding, which likely means there's going to be at least 220 to 250 people that attend, plus everyone who works at the venue, plus all of our vendors. That's a gathering of 300 people. People started talking about sports maybe not even coming back in the fall. And I suddenly realized that 300 people in August was not realistic. And I cried a lot that day. I called my mom the next day and I think she'd kind of been waiting for me to get to this realization on my own. I think that she had realized that Maybe August 8th wasn't happening the way that we had planned it. Um, and she was like, well, why don't you talk to your wedding planner? Because Kenny and I did hire a wedding planner um, specifically to handle the last month of our wedding. And she was supposed to officially take over Memorial Day weekend so that she could handle all the vendor interactions and all the little bits leading up to the wedding day that we wouldn't have to worry about. And then she was going to run our day for us, her and her husband. So my mom said, why don't you reach out to your planner, if that's what she's there for, ask her opinion, see what she thinks. My wedding planner was still optimistic and thought that August could be fine. She was like, you probably don't have to make a decision before June, this is early May. But I, at this point, was convinced I was negative Nancy, I was, I had just jumped off this cliff of like, there's no way my wedding can happen in the course of 24 hours. And I said, I'm fine with putting an official deadline on the books for making this decision as June 1st. A, because I didn't want to send invitations unless I was absolutely positive that our wedding was going to happen. And I knew that if we were going to send invitations, they were going out early June. So I was like, well, I don't want to send invites unless we're having a wedding for sure. So I'm going to set a June 1st deadline for us to make this decision. And in the meantime, I want a backup date on the books because a lot of people were postponing, a lot of vendors' schedules were changing, and I just wanted to touch base with our church, our venue, and our top two vendors, which are our photographer and our band, about their availability for next year so we could just have a goal date in mind for if and when this decision came. And this is the moment. I knew this entire time that our wedding planner was a great investment, but this was the moment that I knew I could not have done this without her. She knew I was emotional. I was coming off of this really hard day where I just cried with my fiance all day realizing that we were probably going to have to postpone and she said let me reach out to your vendors for you I'll just CC you on the emails we'll find their availability and we'll go from there and that was the biggest saving grace I could have ever asked for because the idea of sitting down and typing those emails literally admitting like by putting my fingers to keys that this probably wasn't going to happen in 111 days or whatever it was at that point it was huge that she was able to do that for us so the next big decision we had to make that our planner asked us about is what days are you interested for postponing how far back is safe when will things be open again and how long are you willing to wait to get married after you've been waiting all of this time 
And this was a tricky decision <laughs> for a multitude of reasons. One, like I mentioned, Kenny is a teacher, so he can't really take off extended periods of time during the school year. So something that we had in the back of our minds when planning our original date was a big wish list item for us, and that was to be able to honeymoon right away after the wedding. We knew that we didn't want to pop the fantasy bubble of the wedding right afterwards and go back to work. We wanted to sort of keep the experience going and leave for our honeymoon two to three days after the wedding tops so that we could extend the experience as long as possible and prevent reality from coming back in. So we were willing to compromise on that with a postponement because we didn't have a lot of options. We didn't really want to get married in the fall or December because that would mean that we would have to wait multiple seasons for summer to come around again to finally take our honeymoon. So we figured spring we could live with. If we got married in April, we could wait two months and then take the honeymoon then if we absolutely have to. So I told our planner, basically any Saturdays from the beginning of April through the end of August of 2021, we would look at just so that we had as many weekends as possible to pick from to hopefully maximize everyone's availability to find a date that would work. So she got the availability from our top four vendors. I knew that I wanted to find a date that worked for our existing photographer and our existing band, as well as our church and our reception venue, because those were places that I didn't want to have to replace or find new ones of. Our other vendors, if they weren't all available on the same day, I could replace them. But these four were like our must have vendors that we really didn't want to part with. So our planner got their availability and then we got the availability from all of our bridal party. I asked them, are you in any weddings next year? Any vacations already planned? Anything that is off the table you know you can't do next year. We wanted to take that into consideration. And after we compared all of those sets of availability, there was one day that worked for postponing and it was August 7th of 2021 essentially a full year after our original date of August 8th, 2020. And that sucked. <laughs> the day that we realized that we were going to have to wait an entire year past our original day to get married was a sad one. It wasn't as sad as my first day when I realized that we were going to have to postpone. That was definitely rock bottom. But that realization of having to wait another full year to get married after already being together for 10 years, that was a close second. That was a sad day, but we really didn't have any other choice. So we asked our vendors to please put that backup day on their calendars for us. We asked our bridal party to pencil it in for next year because if it wasn't happening on August 8th, 2020, it was definitely happening on August 7th, 2021. And then we started the waiting game all over again. The two weeks after we had our official backup date, were probably the most stressful of the entire experience because it was just a constant back and forth. Half of our friends and family thought we were overreacting, thought that August 8th, 2020 was in the bag, it would be fine, it would be clear, don't stress about it, you guys are good. And some of our family and friends couldn't believe that we hadn't postponed already. What do you mean? There's no way you can have 300 people together by the end of August. How would you ever do that? It was a lot of back and forth. And it wasn't just our family and friends going back and forth, it was us too. We were constantly up and down. I would wake up in the middle of the night in a hot sweat, freaking out about the wedding. Is it gonna happen? Is it not? I felt like all day long all I did was think about the wedding, all anyone ever wanted to talk to me about was the wedding, and it was exhausting. And I think I just got indecision fatigue. It got to the point where we sat down and we were like, I don't want to deal with this uncertainty anymore. Let's just call it. Let's just call it so we can start making our peace with it and look forward to next year and just get this whole process over with and then maybe take a few months to not talk about the wedding because it felt like the only thing we were thinking about for those two weeks. So middle of May, maybe the third week of May, it was right around Mother's Day. We got to see our families for Mother's Day, socially distant, in backyards, on patios sat across the table from them six feet away to finally see our families for the first time in months. And we ran it by them and we just said, we think we're ready to postpone and officially pull the plug. We're tired of this back and forth. Both of our families were super supportive. They said, whatever you wanna do, we stand by you. We get why you feel this way, go for it. So the next day I texted my planner and I said, 
we are ready to take some control back in the situation. We're tired of feeling helpless. We're tired of the back and forth. We're ready to just make the official move. She said, okay. She reached out to those original vendors that had the backup date on hold for us. They sent us new contracts. We signed them. We sent them back. Done. I sent a big long email to our bridal party announcing the move, trying to give them any information I could think of that they would possibly need to know about the postponement. What to do about their dresses, the shower and bachelorette, all of those good things. Sent that out to them. And thank God we have the most amazing bridal party in the world. They were so supportive through all of this. They were texting me constantly, checking up on me. They knew I was going through hell and back making this decision with Kenny and they have been so amazing. The last big hurdle we had to do after that was reach out to all of the other vendors that we hadn't let known that we were thinking about postponing. I was just gonna take my luck with them and if they weren't available, I'd find replacements. No idea how we got so lucky, but by some miracle, all of our vendors that we had previously contracted for the 8th were available the next year on August 7th, 2021. Don't know how or why, but it worked out the way that it did. They all sent us new contracts, we updated them, we sent them back. And August 8th was no more. And finally, I felt that rush of relief that everyone else was talking about with postponing. I didn't believe them. I heard all of these other brides and couples say like, oh, when it's finally dead and you'll be so glad you did it. The relief is so real. I thought they were full of it. But then it happened. I finally sent it in. I had updated my to-do list. And it was done. We didn't have to worry about it anymore or think about it anymore. All we had to do was be a little sad about the fact that we weren't getting married this year, but for the most part, we just had to wait another year. And now that's what we're gonna do. That's where we're at now. My bachelor party was supposed to be in two weeks. I let my bridal party know that obviously, you know, we'd rather postpone it for later when we know it's safe to travel sometime closer to the wedding next summer. My cat just decided to join us. <laughs> I'm just gonna let her stay. Um, my mom is going to handle the postponement of my shower and one of the silver linings of all of this is that my maid of honor wants to try to surprise me again since that was the original plan back in April when my bridal shower was supposed to be, which is crazy to think about now. And that's pretty much it. Now we wait. There's definitely times when we're sad, like when we hit the day that was supposed to be the 100 day mark and we still weren't sure if we were officially getting married this year or not, but then there are times that I'm happy. There's silver linings. There are couples that were going to be extremely pregnant the week of our original wedding that weren't going to be able to come, but now we'll be able to come the following year. There's a lot of silver linings and pick-me-ups that have come from the whole experience, and I'm trying to hold on to those as best as I can. If you watched this far, thank you. I hope it was helpful. If you made it this far, it's because I'm assuming you're probably in a similar situation to the situation that I went through and you're just looking to hear what other people did, which is what I know I did when I was trying to make this decision. So I hope this helped. And if you're going through the situation that I, me and Kenny went through with this whole postponement thing, then just know that I'm sorry because it does suck and quarantine is hard enough and with all the crazy things going on in the world today, it can be hard just to get through the day sometimes. So. I promise when it comes to wedding planning, it'll get better. You will get to the point where you're happy with your decision. You're going to get the dream day that you've always dreamed of. And the most important thing out of all this is that you're still gonna get to marry the love of your life. And whenever that happens, it will be so worth the wait and so much sweeter for having gone through all of this mayhem to get to that point. So if you are a bride or a groom in the wedding planning process, then I'm hoping the videos I make in the coming weeks might be helpful to you. I really want to give the whole wedding content thing a try because I really enjoyed wedding planning, at least as far as I had gotten before we had to postpone. And I learned a lot from our first attempt at it, and now I'm assuming I'll learn even more by going through round two. So I figured I would just try and share some of the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way. Some of them I made up myself, some of them I've gotten from other content creators and research I've done, and some of them have come from my planner who has been so useful in this entire process. So stay tuned for videos in the coming weeks. I hope to put one out every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And if you have specific questions or things that you want me to talk about, I'm happy to make videos about whatever you find interesting. I'm not an expert by any means. I'm not a member of the wedding industry, 
I'm just a bride who likes wedding planning who is going to have to do it twice because of the pandemic. So if I can share anything from my own experiences that may be helpful, please let me know if you have anything specific that you want me to discuss. Happy to take that into consideration. In the meantime, I have a few things planned in the coming weeks. I also want to share that I'm just getting started with my own Etsy shop where I plan on sharing some of the templates that I made on Excel for making my own life easier while wedding planning. The one that's posted right now is a guest list template, so if you want to save yourself the hassle of building your own template for the time being, then you can just go instantly download the one that I made off of Etsy. It can help you track not only your invitees and their addresses and all that good stuff, but also who's invited to your bachelorette party, your shower, your rehearsal dinner, do you think they'll need a hotel room, what are their meal options, do they have a dietary restriction, I have all of that good stuff already built into this template for you to just pop in your information and go. So I think that's all for now. Um, thank you for watching if you made it this far. I'm still sort of getting my sea legs back when it comes to talking to a camera. It doesn't feel natural. I'm gonna have to get used to that again. But I did miss making content, so I'm hoping that talking about wedding-related things over the next couple of weeks can sort of help me get back into the habit. And hopefully I'll see you then. Bye guys!